You've tried to enhance realism in all kinds of ways, but I know you haven't. I know you. You haven't tried autofocus, which is this. Let's try. And okay, so you see that got in focus, and then it's out of focus, and then this. And your camera kind of intelligently knows what it should kind of make sharp. And that is using some math that you didn't think was possible in Blender until I hopped on the scene. So let's do it. So here's a perfect example. We have a scene pretty reminiscent of a room. Uh, this is actually my bathroom. First of all, we have this very distant wall that's going to be right at the uh, middle of the frame. We also have have, let's see, we have chairs in the foreground, we have these sofas in the midground, and then the question is, what do we want to be in focus? So right now we select our camera, depth of field is not enabled, so we enable it for like a very tiny f-stop, just so we can see what's going on here. You're going to see right now that kind of the stairs are in focus. I can bring that distance closer, and now the chairs are in focus, which tells you the only number that matters is this distance. In fact, here's a trick that we're going to be using. I can make a object that is a empty, and suppose we want to define the distance between the camera and this empty as that focal distance. Select it, go to depth of field, and for the focus object, just select that empty. And as we move it, it should change what is and isn't in focus. So now the obvious trick is if I can now take this empty and project it onto the geometry from wherever the camera is, then of course we're golden. It can sample the distance, whatever. Well, how do we do that? It's not obvious. There is a constraint. I think it's called follow track. And you can see it has a depth object, which means that does exactly what we want. So for example, the camera that we're using is our main camera. The depth object can be this like back wall over here, or I guess this glass. And then you may be asking yourself if this is the case, why is it not projecting? It turns out you actually need to do some like motion tracking, even if there isn't any um, movie clip or whatever to get this to work. Very strange implementation, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to go to the movie clip editor. I'm going to make a movie clip. It's literally going to be a picture. Here, it's a picture of wood. It really doesn't matter what it is. Delete this empty and instead, I'm going to add a tracker. So control click to add a tracker. I go to reconstruction. Notice it's about at the uh, middle of the frame. I go to reconstruction, link empty to track, and you're going to see it makes this empty. From the camera's perspective, it should be roughly in the uh, middle. If I add one here and link empty to track, now it's going to be on this side of the frame. But you're going to see now we have these options where it's saying, okay, we're using this fake footage from the camera's perspective, using the track data, etc. And now when I set the depth object to this, it's going to exactly project on the wall. You can see it's stays in focus. I, I think you can see where I'm going with this. By the way, if you kind of go off of it, you might be wondering what happens. It starts uh, glitching out. Let's take this a step further now. What if I want to be able to do this anywhere in my scene, not just on this uh, back wall? Well, that means our depth object has to be the entire scene, and that is not an option. Or is it? I'm going to hide everything that isn't a model. So the build collection, the furniture collection, the decoration collection. Whoa, I did not know there was text here. I'm going to hide all of this, and instead, I'm going to add a cube. He must have lost his marbles now. What we're going to do with this cube is we're going to go to geo nodes, create a geometry nodes group, and we can turn this cube into the geometry of our scene. We take a collection. For this collection, I'm going to pick one of the collections that has the geo that I care about. So let's do the build collection over here. I now view it, and you can see we get all this data over here. Of course, you can make a collection for the collections, but for now, I'm just going to kind of merge them one by one. Let's bring in the essentials, decorations, and we had furniture. I'm going to take them and just join them together so that we have all the data over here. If I look at the info, you can see we basically have five instances, one for each of these. Take all this information and realize instances. What this means is instead of just having instance data, we have the real geometry. So realize instance, connect this here. It's going to take a moment. Now you can see this entire object encapsulates the scene. For my camera, I'm just going to put it in the scene collection. Let's again call this projection. I'm going to make my depth object the projection. So now I think it is working. Let me rotate my camera. Amazing. So you see it's basically snapping uh, to whatever surface is closest, but from my view, it's always going to be in the middle. Boom. Auto focus setup, which hopefully what we care about is will it kind of transition focus as we uh, do one of these. And speaking of autofocus, autofocus on the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. You've heard of Brilliant. I've heard of Brilliant. This phone has heard of Brilliant. It is the place to not only learn things, whether it be like, you know, technical, math, coding, whatever. It has kind of this like ethos of becoming a daily practice because you can try to bulk learn something and that kind of doesn't work. But if you do something every day, you chip away at it, you get insights, you understand things, you absorb, you're a sponge. And if, if you want to be a modern, a modern person, you got to learn about LLMs. It's all the rage. We're talking chat GPT. We're talking llama. We're talking the infrastructure of the future. Like, do you know about vectorizing tokens? Do you know about context windows? Well, Brilliant has a whole like module about this stuff. Now, if you want to try everything 
something brilliant has to offer for what? For free for the next 30 days. There's a link in the description. I know. Oh, can you catch it? It's a QR code. I'll leave it right here for you. Get those free 30 days. And more than that, you're going to get 20% off the annual membership for the whole year. So make it happen. Okay, let's try it. Make sure the camera has depth of field with a focus object of this new track. Well, now we can actually hide the projection object and enable all of these collections. So we view what the scene actually was, but we keep our projection object hidden. Okay, so here you can see we're kind of pointing at the couch. So that is in focus. But the moment that I kind of look at a wall, that is going to snap to being in focus. Let's kind of look at this little chair in front of us. That's in focus. And now the plant. I wonder if this would be easier to see in look dev. As I point at different things, you can see they all come into focus depending on what it is I look on or look at. This isn't like our final product because of course this instant autofocus would be a very expensive camera. It's not very realistic. What we need is first of all to have it be delayed like whatever the camera does it should take like a second lag to um, kind of autofocus and second of all we should improve our sampling method to be uh, more intelligent. So I'm going to do a very short kind of animation of my camera. So maybe it starts over here at a keyframe and moves forwards and like points this way for some reason. And let's have it right here kind of look at a near object. So we can actually see that autofocus working. So now it's going to look here and then look somewhere else. Okay, great. This again is going to have our autofocus, but it is way too instant. So we need it to lag behind. Simple. We take our track, which I can call depth of field, and you can try baking its position, its motion. I thought constraint to F curve did this, but I don't think it does. So do a bake action. I'm just going to enable all of them and click OK. And now you can see we have all of these uh, keyframes up to uh, 100 because I didn't animate after that. This uh, empty is now no longer dependent on the camera, which means when I move this, it's going to go backwards through time, right? And really what I want to do is I want to bring this forward, I believe. So it takes maybe 20 frames to catch up. So right now we're looking at the chair. It waits. Boom, it's in focus. Waits. Boom, it's in focus. Of course, it's still kind of instant, even though it's a delayed instant uh, response. And that's because our motion is too kind of immediate. So for that, I'd go to the graph editor. Here is all our data. And you can see where these sharp spikes are, like uh, over here. You can select everything and smooth keys. Let's try that. Yep, that's the one. So just enable smooth key a bunch of times. Okay, we move, there's a bit of a delay, and then it pulls focus. This time it pulls focus. And that seems a lot uh, more natural than what we had before. And I'll do a render of this so you can see it uh, on the screen here. But I do want to do a different like sampling method. And this one is going to basically be a more complicated sampling, uh, which modern cameras basically do. Because they don't just look at the uh, midpoint and like look at the depth, which in fact they can't do. They basically like pull focus in either direction and see which one makes it sharper for this little uh, sample area. Instead of this, I'm going to put maybe a tracker here, 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 and here, and here. So basically like a, a grid that I can reposition to kind of be a, a tighter fit. So now we have nine sample points that of course, because they're in different positions, they might sample different areas, but we're going to average these together. Take all of them, link empties to track. Let's see this in a wireframe. So yeah, here you can see all of our empties and and we're going to need to change the depth object. We want it to be our projection object. Okay, that seems to be good, but does it do it to all them? No. So I'm just going to do it one by one. The reason I'm not like copying constraints is there is a difference between these and that they use different tracks, right? Of course, this doesn't really solve our issue because we don't know which one to basically sample from for our depth of field. You can choose like track zero or track one, and they're all going to be different ones. What we need is some kind of general averaging. You could use all kinds of functions, but I'm just going to say, look at all these depths and pick the one that's kind of in the middle. You can use a media and you can do whatever you want. So for these tracks, I'm going to put them in a collection called tracks. And as far as I know, there is no method to like average out constraints, but there is for sure a way to do this in geometry nodes. So let me hide everything. My hamburger got dropped off and I don't want anybody to take it, but ugh, I don't have time. But here you can see all the uh, sampling, by the way, looks super cool. Create a geo nodes object. So for us, it's going to be a cube. I'm going to call this cube averaging or averaging. And I'm going to bring in our tracks collection just like we did for the other one. And then I can hide my tracks collection because when I view this, it's going to have our empties. Now, very important, this is not geometry data at all. In fact, if you look at the spreadsheet, you can see it's one instance that encapsulates all of these, which makes no sense, right? They're nine different positions. So make sure to hit separate children. Now we have nine different instances whose uh, positions should update over time. And we just need to take the average of these. I'm going to use geometry as like a proxy for calculating this. What I mean is I'm going to make points. So let's say we have nine of them. Basically, each of these empties is going to inherit a point. It's going to get a little convoluted, but I'm going to sample the position, right, of these instances. So I'm going to set this to 
index, and I'm going to set our variable to position. So the way you want to read this is we have our empty collection, and I'm sampling for every one for the index its position. And I can use all of these, easy as can be, as the points over here. We have points that are replicating our motion, and you might see where I'm going with this. We're going to get the average of these, so take this and get the statistics on it. I care about their position, so that's what I'm going to evaluate. So for nine points, what are their positions? And with that, what does the mean become? I'm going to make one more point that's going to inherit this mean, and this uh, point should basically represent the average. How do we turn this into our depth of field object? And this is where it gets a little tricky, because uh, the actual geometry data of this is over here. We haven't changed the position of anything. So if we were to focus on this object, it wouldn't care about this dot at all. In fact, I'm going to take this points just because it might be useful, and I'm going to turn it into a vertex. I am going to take this and create a, a new empty. This is going to be our like master depth of field object. So I'm going to call this one depth of field. And the trick is we need to basically pin this uh, to this vertex. So let's see, I don't actually know how to do this. I'm going to try to do a copy location of our averaging object, which you can see doesn't really do anything unless I move the entire thing. So it doesn't care about this point. So this is what we have to figure out. And I think the trick is we need to have our vertex group kind of defined. So what I mean by this is if it knows what vertices to follow, uh, we'll be good to go. I'm going to add a vertex group. I'm going to call this one follow, which right now none of them are inheriting. For this uh, attribute, I'm going to basically define it to be equal to one to exist uh, when it's on this point. So I'm hopefully just going to be able to overwrite this. I'm going to set follow equal to one. So I take this empty. I now go to the vertex group. Follow is an option, and it doesn't seem to care at all, which means we need to get a bit trickier. I'm willing to get trickier. Well, what we know is if I take this original cube, and let's say we take this uh, vertex group and assign, uh, now each one of these vertices has this property. Not necessarily this one, because it's new geometry. So if I can take this cube that has the right kind of vertex group and map it over here, I'm hoping that would be the solution. I don't need any of this anymore. In fact, all I need is my original uh, cube, and I'm going to shift the geometry, not the object, but the geometry data by this uh, translation. So this is basically going to pin the cube uh, to the correct location. Now, does this work is the big question. It does. It does. Um, so for this averaging object, I'm just going to take the scale and set it to zero. So it's kind of like a single point. And now we have our kind of averaged out projector. Where is the payoff, you may ask? This should theoretically give us a more like accurate autofocus for how cameras work. So here's our depth of field object. You can see it's not exactly on the camera because we averaged it out. I'm going to take this and do the same thing again. I can take all the data that we've collected in some sense and bake it down into a single action. Again, it's going to be a bit jumpy, but if I now smooth keys, let's do it four times. Now we get a more stable autofocus. Okay, so remember, this is not delayed at all yet. I can take our keyframes and shift them down a bit. So again, let's say it takes 20 frames lag for it to know where to focus at, and then it's facing here, then it gets a bit shallower. Incredible. So I'm also going to make this a uh, render result that you can see. So I don't actually know which one looks better. Okay, so that was a convoluted one, more convoluted than I thought. But if you want to get this one file that I've now cleaned up and made it like a preset that is much more understandable, you can get access to that, yes, on my Patreon, of course, but I'm now trying to pivot to a subscription, same kind of thing on my website, literally cgmatter.com. The only difference is now 10% of the money doesn't go to Patreon. So if you want to support a creator, it goes more directly. There's not something in one that isn't in the other. There's the same kind of tiers and stuff. But if you were to pick, I'd highly prefer my uh, website. So hopefully you learned something. I hope I was the first person to make a proper autofocus tutorial. That would be very cool. Focus on my fingers, and now focus on me, and goodbye.